Welcome to an Amadeus GDS video tutorial where I will be booking a round trip international flight itinerary and creating a PNR. My name is Chris Phipp. Thanks for tuning in. Quickly before I begin, big shout out to the excellent faculty of Square One's Travel Industry Sales and Technology Training Program. Let's get started with the following scenario. I am working as a travel agent and client Bucky Fuller, who is residing in Atlantic City, New Jersey, has contacted me to book a round trip flight to Moscow, Russia on September 9th and then return home after a week on September 16th. Okay, first thing I want to do is break down what a PNR is and how to complete one successfully. PNR stands for passenger name record. Each PNR consists of a collection of information items called elements and must contain the following five. Name, which is the passenger's name. Itinerary, which would be the booking for a flight or other service. Contact, a telephone number or contact information for the person making the booking. The ticketing element, which is an indication of the arrangements for issuing a ticket for the booking, and the received from element, which is the name of the person who has made the booking. A helpful trick for remembering these five mandatory fields to complete a PNR is the PRINT acronym, P-R-I-N-T, for phone number, received from, itinerary, name, and ticket time limit. Okay, so here we can see how I log into the Amadeus selling platform. I will be working in training mode, and once I am in, I will proceed by selecting the command tab. Let's begin with entering the traveler's name. To create a PNR for our traveler, Bucky Fuller, we will want to be sure to use his name as it appears on his passport which is Buckminster Fuller. Enter code NM for the name, followed by the number one to specify a single passenger, followed by the passenger's last name, Fuller, forward slash, passenger's first name, Buckminster. So here we have the code NM1 Fuller forward slash Buckminster. Next, we will enter a home phone number of the person who is making the booking, which in this case is our passenger, Mr. Fuller. I will use code APH for add phone home dash their phone number beginning with the area code like so, APH dash 609 space 867 dash 5309. Then to add a received from element, use code RF followed by the name of the person who requests the reservation. Again, our passenger has requested reservation for himself. So we will enter RF received from uh, Buckminster Fuller. Now we have entered values for the name, phone, and received from elements. To complete the PNR, we will need an itinerary and a ticketing arrangement. There are several ways to search for flights when building an itinerary. To pull up the flight availabilities, I will need to know the airport or the city codes of both the point of departure and the destination. The codes DAN and DAC are useful tools to encode and decode cities and airports. DAN Atlantic City yields the following information. We see here the city code is AIY, noted here by the letter C for city, but the international airport code is ACY and noted with an A for airport. DAN Moscow reveals several airports, so I will use the city code MOW, which will cover all the airports associated with the city of Moscow. This would be similar to using New York's city code NYC 
which will include three major international airports in its region. John F. Kennedy International, JFK, LaGuardia, LGA, and also includes Newark Liberty International in northern New Jersey, EWR. Now to find flight availability by departure time, I will use the AD code followed by the date, September 9 in the format, 09 SEP, which is the day of the month followed by the first three letters of the month. If the day happens to be one of the first nine days of the month, add a zero to the beginning to keep the date format in two numeral characters, such as 09 SEP for September 9th. Then the point of departure, which will be ACY for Atlantic City International, followed by the code of the destination, MOW for all airports in the region of the city of Moscow, Russia. So we have code AD09SEPACYMOW. I can specify a time to display the next flights departing at an entered time and later listing flight departures sequentially. The format for a specified time would be that code followed by a 5A for 5 a.m. or 5P for 5 p.m. No time being specified will default to listing the first flight of the day and displaying them listed by their departure time. Okay, so let's see what results we get with AD09SEPACYMOW. These first three flights seem to go way out of the way to, to connect from Atlantic City. The flight listed number one has two connections, which can be seen here. Uh, it departs ACY to Tampa, Florida, before going back to JFK uh, before departing to SVO Moscow for a total flight time of 22 hours and 15 minutes. The next two flights are identical. Uh, here I use the MD navigate code to move down the list, displaying the next page of my availability by departure results. The next three options have trip times of over 27 hours with two connections. Uh, this is where I see that it would benefit me to instead search again this time with the AN code, which is availability neutral. This will display the flights with the shortest time length displayed first and listing them by their flight durations. A quick shortcut I use is holding the ALT and tapping the up arrow to bring back previously entered codes from the session. So now I have the code I used for the first results and I'm going to change the AD to an AN by using the left arrow to move the cursor and now we have AN09SEPACYMOW. The shortest flight available is nearly 16 hours and has two connections. It goes from Atlantic City to Atlanta, Georgia and then back up to JFK, New York, and then to Moscow. The next two shortest options are nearly 17 and 19 hours, both with two connection flights. Since Atlantic City International Airport is not a major hub, it seems to be in my passenger's best interest to drive from Atlantic City and depart from Philadelphia International, a larger airport and about an hour drive. To check the airport code, DAN Philadelphia, which reveals PHL as our international airport code. Again, I'll use my Alt and Up Arrow shortcut and replace ACY with PHL. Now, our updated availability search will be AN09SEP PHL MOW. Here we have a couple more practical flight options. The first two options listed only have one connection and are between 12 and 13 hours in flight duration. 
This drive and departing from PHL will save a connecting flight, reducing the shortest flight itinerary from approximately 16 to 12 hours. This makes more sense in this situation and if our client is willing to drive approximately twice the distance to a New York airport departure, we can run the availability neutral search again with NYC as the point of departure. So we would enter AN09SEP NYC MOW. This search reveals two nonstop flights from JFK International to SVO Moscow with no connection for a scheduled flight time of about nine hours. Here I pulled the availability neutral search code again and added the slash FN filter for nonstop flights only. Then since I would like to book a round trip returning seven days after the departure, I can use asterisk plus seven, which will show me return flights in seven days from the departure date. You could alternatively specify a date of return following the asterisk, such as asterisk 16 SEP. This will display the same results. So it seems I have two flight options for each way. On September 9th, I like flight listed number one, which departs JFK at 2.20 p.m. and arrives in SVO Moscow at 6.25 a.m. the following morning. It is noted here by the plus one E zero that that local time will be the next day from the date of the departure. And for the return to the States on September 16th, I like flight listed number 12, which departs SVO Moscow at 2.25 p.m and is scheduled to arrive at 5.20 p.m. the same day. Note that these times are local to the airport, so at a glance, it may appear to be 2.30 p.m. departure and arriving at 5.30 p.m., seeming like a three-hour flight, but due to crossing time zones, this is not the case. The true flight duration is displayed very clearly right here, which is approximately 10 hours. Now that I have flights picked uh, to book, I will use the cell seat code SS, the number of seats, which is one, the letter Y, which designates economy class, the number one, which is the corresponding list number of the flight I want to buy the first seat on, followed by an asterisk with the list number of the returning flight, which we see here is number 12. So the code would look like this, SS1Y1 asterisk 12. Now we can see the flight itinerary is added to our PNR. Here I type code FXX to display the fair price, approximately $4,070 USD. Now I will use the FXA code to find the lowest fair prices that are available for the same flights. Then I will use the FXB code to rebook the lower fare if available and create the TST, which is the transitional stored ticket. I can type code FXX to take another look at the updated discounted fare price if found. The fare is now approximately $2,300, which is almost half the original booked fare, saving almost $2,000 USD. And you know what Richard Saunders says, a penny saved is a penny earned. Or was it, a penny saved is two pence dear? I'll tell you what I think, all play and no work makes Richard a poor boy. Back to minding my business. Now that we have completed the itinerary element of this PNR, I am not going to submit a payment until after I confirm with the client. To complete and save the PNR, I must have a ticket arrangement element. This is where I will use the ticket time limit by entering code TKTL, which is used to request ticket issuance from your office, today's date, and current local time. 
If payment is not processed by the time limit expiration, the PNR will be void and need to be rebooked. This completes the final element of the PNR. Now I can use code ET to end the transaction and save or ER to end the transaction, save, then retrieve the, and display the booking information. Either way, you will have a confirmation code that represents the completed PNR. Here is the confirmation code. Be sure to save it. To continue booking other accounts, use code IG to ignore the active ticket. IG. Code RT followed by the confirmation code is used to retrieve a saved completed PNR. As so, RT followed by the confirmation code and IG to ignore. When you are finished working with the MDAS selling platform, remember to use code JO asterisk jump off, which will log your user account out of all workspaces before you close the client. I really glossed over a lot of information, features, and options in this tutorial. If you are new to this global distribution system, do not be discouraged. This tutorial is more geared to an intermediate trainee. Check out aeuniversity.com and YouTube for more video tutorials and educational materials for training and working in the Amadeus GDS. If you are interested in a professional education in GDS systems or finding work as a travel associate, check out Square One's The Travel Industry Training Program. See in the video comments for more information. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Chris Phipp and I am looking for a position in the travel industry. My resume is available on my website, chrisphipp.com, C H R I S F I P P dot C O M, along with my up to date contact information. And finally, special thanks to Square One and Mary Ellen Solano for the opportunity to produce this video.